Welcome to Central College's online service. If you'd like to chat and don't know how, here's a little guide to help get you set up. Since you're here, you should see the chat window on the right. At the bottom of the chat window, there's a box that says say something. When you hover over the box, it'll say sign into chat. If you don't have a Google account, you'll have to make one now. Click create new account and follow the on-screen prompts. When you're finished, you should be signed in. Return to the live stream page and hover over the say something box again it should change to say, create a channel to join the chat. Click here. A box will pop up saying, chat as. If it's empty, enter the name you want displayed in the chat window when you post a chat message. Once you enter your chat as name, click create channel. This takes you to your channel page. You don't have to do anything here just to chat. So now navigate back to the church's YouTube page to view the service. Now where you saw say something before, you should now see your name. You're all set. Click in the box, type your chat message, hit enter, and you should see your chat message post to the chat window. Thank you so much for coming today. We hope you enjoy worship with us. Good morning. My name is Cody Knowles, and I'm the communications director here at Central College Church. 
We're so glad that you're joining us today for our online services. A couple quick notes before we get started, though. First, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell next to it so that you can get more updates on when we go live and when we have videos to post. Also, make sure that you fill out the Connect card that's in the description so that we can better connect with you and understand your needs from us as a church. We'd love to hear from you about if you'd be interested in Bible studies or if there's anyone else viewing with you today, as well as any prayer requests that you have. Community and fellowship is very important. So right now we're making a big push for Bible studies. You can go online to our website and see what Bible studies are being offered that we're offering through Right Now Media and through Zoom. We want to make sure that you guys are connecting with each other to further your faith and, and grow together as Christians. I'm back and feeling much better. Thank you so much for all your prayers and gracious thoughts. So, this Tuesday, June the 9th, we are back for a wonderful hymn sing featuring all things summer. So please tune in around 7 p.m. this Tuesday, June the 9th, and I promise we will have some Summer fun. See you then. Hi, everybody. This is Hope Sattler from Children's Ministry. Just wanted to say that we really miss seeing you all and miss seeing the kids. Wanted to let you know that we are still doing Sunday school, and we're also doing a preschool toddler story time throughout the week as well. If you want to check those out, which I highly suggest you do, go on to the website and go under Kidman. We look forward to seeing you. Take care. Thank you, Hope. It's so exciting to see what we're doing, even for the kids, right now, during this weird time. Now, we know it's a strange time and we know you might be strapped, but there are still three ways to give here at Central College. First, you can mail in a check directly to our address here at 975 South Sunbury Road. You can also give by text by texting the number that is on your screen and texting an amount. Finally, you can go to our website and click on the giving button to give directly to the church. We thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving at this time, and we know that you might not be able to give as much as you used to, but we still pray that you will give what you can so that we can help those in our community and further the kingdom of God. Thank you so much again. Have a lovely day. Good morning, church. This is the day our Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Just because we can't be physically together, of course, doesn't mean we can't be connected. Let's take a few moments uh, using the chat feature and let's greet one another in the name of the Lord. Let's join together in our call to worship taken from Psalm 33 this morning. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Sing, Sing to, to him, him a new song. song. Play skillfully and, and shout, shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The, the Lord, Lord loves, loves righteousness, righteousness and, and justice. justice. 
The, the earth, earth is full of his, his unfailing love. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In, in him, him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Let's praise God together. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. And every one of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. Oh, sing ye, alleluia. Ye who Lord pain and sorrow bear, praise God and cast on God your care. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. All creatures, your Creator bless and worship God in humbleness. Spirit free in one. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto each of you from God our Father and even from our Lord and Savior, God's own Son. We come before the throne of grace, before God our Father this morning in our time of prayer, uh, hearing again the not only conviction, but the confession of John the Apostle and disciple. And remember, he's the one who refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. If John needs to come again and again uh, before the Lord in prayer, how much more do you and I? Listen to God's word from the first letter of John, the first chapter. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and God's truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is always faithful and just, and he will always forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we come first uh, praying the prayer of the words before you in unison as a family of faith, and then in a few moments of silence. Would you pray with us? Steadfast, Steadfast God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we have been so busy putting, putting up walls between ourselves and others. And others. We, we cannot see, see the home that you are building for all of us. We, we run, run to, to welcome, welcome those who look, talk, talk and, and act, act like us. Yet, yet in your house are, are all ages, socioeconomic conditions, conditions, levels of education, education differences in calling and vocation, preferences in custom and style. You delight in variety while we allow differences to divide. Forgive us, great God, for this great sin. We yearn to be a community of believers united in your spirit. Help us to learn to live and serve together, welcoming each one loving one another and respecting each other in everything we do and say. Help us to be as you call us, one in heart and mind, through the grace of your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
Dear friends, always remember that this grace came to us and was available to us long before we were even aware, long before even you or I were ready to receive it. For in the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Rome, he writes these beautiful words. For God demonstrates his own love for each of us in the fact, in the reality, that while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for each of us. Thanks be to God. Our choir anthem today comes from a service last September. Uh, this is I Will Trust in the Lord by Lloyd Larson with our chancel choir. Wasn't that beautiful? And I can't think of a, a greater message for any of us right now during this time of uncertainty, a time of civil unrest, than to trust in the Lord. Let's put our hearts with him. Heavenly Father, as we come to your word now, we just ask that you would enlighten our hearts and our minds, that we might not just be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, do you believe in miracles? 
I don't mean miracles that are in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Um, I, I'm not talking about historical miracles. Do you believe that God is still doing miracles today? I'm not sure that um, I'd specifically call this a miracle, but it's certainly the power of God at work. What we have seen happening at Central College these last weeks, these last um, eight, nine weeks even. Our Sunday school has, uh, our children's Sunday school has 60 kids that have tuned in uh, on one week. That's about double what, the, what it was before the pandemic. Uh, our, our food pantry is feeding even more people and yet is so well subscribed and supported that we were able to do our Miracle Mountain of Food and this time send all that food to a sister church down in the inner city where there's a food scarce uh, society there and, and Trinity Baptist is distributing that food. Our worship attendance has just been uh, tremendous. Of course, you're not coming in person unless you're coming to the drive-in service. In fact, 305 of you did last week. We had about 200 who tuned in on the streaming services at 930, and we've had an additional 775 who've tuned into one of those two services uh, in the week since then. It's just amazing what God is doing. In our Care Connections ministry and program, we've had over 4,000 emails, phone calls, or letters sent between one member and and another. It's just absolutely amazing. And, and the whole time, even as people are not able to come, and so giving you would think would really drop off precipitously, you God's people have been so generous that we're con continuing not only to do our ministries, but to grow our ministries. I'd say that comes close to miraculous in a time when there's a pandemic and we can't even gather together, that God brings such abundance and increase. Well, today we're going to look at a miracle from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. You'll remember that the book of Acts was uh, Luke's second book. So his first book, he wrote the Gospel of Luke, and that's the story of Jesus. The second book he wrote was the book of Acts, and that's the story of the church. And so we're going to look at um, this picture as we walk through Acts just for the month of June. Uh, we're going to look at the picture of the, of the kind of church that God intends his church to be, what we've called a big tent church or big tent Christianity. And so today I want to go back to Acts chapter 2. We're going to look at the birth of the church, and we'll just read, I don't know, about the first 13 verses or so. So turn with me if you've got your Bible, or let's look together. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues." Amazed and perplexed, they asked of one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Friends, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So did you catch what the miracle was there? Almost every Pentecost, last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday, we focus on this passage or some aspect of it, and we usually point to the gift of tongues that the disciples were given as the actual miracle. But I think something else was a, a larger miracle. And I want, I want us to see that, and then we're going to see how God builds that kind of miracle. Look again at verse 5. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And so what we have in the beginning right here is we have a group of people who are, who are there's something that they have in common. They're all God-fearing. They're all Jews. But as we read the, the rest of the passage, we see that they are nonetheless radically different from one another. They're different in their cultures. In 586 B.C., the temple of Jerusalem was um, sacked, and the Jews were taken away and, and kind of dispersed. 
And some of those um, dispersions that happened over the next several hundred years, actually, those folks did never come back. Some of them did come back, many of them didn't. And they settled in all these different nations. So after hundreds of years, though they are God-fearing Jews, you can imagine that nonetheless, their language is different, their dress is different, their culture is different. A lot of things about them are different. In fact, if you want to take a, pic, a, a look at, the, at this area of the world, you can see all the places that they came from. And so over here we have um, Parthia and Media and Elam, and Elam, where the Elamites were from, and that's in present-day uh, Iran. Mesopotamia is present-day Iraq and Kuwait and western Syria. You have Judea, of course, which is near Jerusalem. That's uh, the land of Israel and Palestine. Arabia down here, that's Saudi Arabia, present-day Saudi Arabia. Pontus and Cappadocia, Pamphylia, Phrygia, Asia, these are all in modern-day Turkey. Crete, of course, is the island, uh, Cretans for, from the island of Crete. Um, Cyrene is the, the area of Libya, and Egypt is here. This is northern Africa. And so all of these different cultures come together. And I think what we have here really is a picture of the church that God intends. It's a picture of what God wants the church to be, a big tent kind of Christianity church. In fact, think about what it's going to be like before the throne. Revelation chapter 9 says that after this I looked, John writes, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. That's the picture of what God is assembling his people. Today I want us to focus on what I believe is true as well. It's a picture of what God wants our church to be. No, not that we would have every tribe and tongue and nation here, but that we would recognize that we have something in common here. We're God-fearing, Christ-following people here at Central College. We have Central College as our church home in common. And yet we have to acknowledge that we also have all sorts of differences. We're from different generations. We've got people from the greatest generation. We've got boomers. We've got Gen Xers. We've got Generation Y, which are millennials, Generation Z. And each one has a little bit different culture, sometimes a radically different culture, one to the other. We have differences in, in race. We have differences in our level of education, differences in our socioeconomic class, differences in our preferences and our styles, our customs, even when it comes to music and worship. I think before we can do something about unity outside these walls, which of course God wants, we need to find unity right here within the walls. Make a place where we can hear the, the wonders of God in our own tongue. And we allow other people to hear the wonders of God in their own tongue. So how do we get there? I'm going to give you three points. We'll spend a little bit of time on the first and, and even less in the second two. But the text, I think, shows us three things. The first one I almost missed. The text starts out with the Father's plan. We'll see that in a moment. And then the Spirit's power. That's the part we usually focus on. And finally, the whole point is to make the Savior's people. And so let's look first at, at the Father's plan. What is God doing? This isn't something that just happened at Pentecost. Instead, um, it's something that God intended to have happen from a long time ago. And so Acts chapter 2, verse 1 starts at when Pentecost came. So what is Pentecost? Well, as Christians, we, of course, think of this particular incident that we've read about. We think this is something that happened in, um, in 30 A.D. But instead, Pentecost was a Jewish holiday now remember, they, they, there'd been the, the, the Passover, and then after that um, comes a, a, a while later this Pentecost holiday. But like, like the uh, Passover, it's a pilgrim's holiday. It's where people would come from all, wherever their homes were, and they would come to Jerusalem for this holiday. They'd gather together. It was actually set up in Exodus uh, by the command of the Lord. And it was a reminder that God wanted to give his people that he is the one who always gives provision. That everything we have comes from his hands. And so it began, this celebration, actually, right after Pentecost, the day after, right after the last Sabbath, um, there, there was a, a, a celebration called, that began that was called um, the Festival of First Fruits. And so the people would bring the very first grains that were, that they were being harvested. It's the very beginning of the, the harvest of grain season. It was barley. And as they made a sacrifice of that, what they were saying is, hey, this is a risky thing. The rest of the grain, something could happen to it. But we're going to trust God, who always is the one who provides for us, by bringing these first fruits. And then 50 days later, 
would be this thing called the Festival of Weeks. 50 days, a Pentecost, Penta is 50 in the Greek language, and that's what this, uh, this celebration was called in the Greek. So it was seven weeks later, seven sevens later, seven being that number of perfection, that God says, okay, there's the first fruits, and then comes the perfection, then comes the harvest. And this season of 50 days actually corresponded with the, the season of harvesting grain in Israel. So God wanted his people to have this habit of remembering that he'd taken them out of slavery in Egypt, and then remembering that, that provision would come by his hand, that was the beginning, the day after um, the Passover at the very end. And then 50 days later, God would want a big celebration where, God, where pe God's people would say, yes, this has all come from God's hand. This is actually a picture of God's plan. You know, just like the sacrifices of the Old Testament were simply pointing towards Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain for the sins of the world, just like that Passover, that first Passover, and the meal that was celebrated is really pointing, as we find out in the Last Supper, pointing to Jesus. This is my body broken. This is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. In the same way, the first fruits that were offered right after that Passover, that's pointing to Jesus. When did Jesus rise from the dead? The day after the last Sabbath of Passover. In fact, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is all a part of God's plan. And Pentecost, which he instituted back in Exodus, finally comes to its full, full fulfillment, its full expression, when God, through Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit, brings in the harvest. That's God's plan for his people. A place where everyone hears in their own language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Isn't that beautiful? What were they proclaiming? What were they hearing? They were hearing the wonders of God. Everybody was able to, to, to get connected with what God had done. Can we do that at Central College? Can we care enough about one another who are Central College with us inside these walls? Our extended ministries too, of course, our schools and, and, and those who come in any way contact with us. Can we make a place to put aside our own language, our own preferences, so that others might hear the wonders of God declared in the language that they understand? And again, I mean not just uh, languages of nations. I'm talking about the, the preferences. I'm talking about the styles. I'm talking about the cultures that we bring because of our age and our education and, and those kind of things. In other words, instead of having a do unto others as you would have others do unto you kind of atmosphere, see, that's, that's the atmosphere where I say, what I want is what everybody should want. So I'm going to do to you what I want you to do to me. Instead of that, can we, with the Apostle Paul, say, I would be all things to all people that I might save some? Could I actually hear a song that was in a style that wasn't for me, but instead of grumbling about it, I would delight in it because I knew that somebody was hearing the wonders of God in their own tongue? Can we get that kind of mindset, put on those kind of glasses? Can we have a unity of purpose, in other words, but respect no more than that, to celebrate and include our differences. Well, guess what? I don't think we can. I don't think we can, at least not in our own strength. But we're not supposed to be doing this in our own strength. It can only happen through the Spirit's power. Only happen as God empowers this, right? Only God can do this, and I think he's doing it right now. I think that's what we're seeing with the increase in the number of people who are connecting to our worship services and our children's education and our ability to serve through the food pantry and so on and so forth. It's the Spirit's power. Look with me at these next verses. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You know, when God moves, <laughs> sometimes it gets messy, right? When God moves, there are tongues of flames and and, and, and there's a mighty wind. 
Only God can do this. But God can do it in His time through His Spirit and His power. Have you noticed that in times of suffering, times of persecution, if you look around the world, all of a sudden what falls away are our petty differences. That it's got to be my way or your way. If you go to Haiti with one of our mission teams or Honduras with one of our mission teams, you'll see Christians of not just different denominations but vastly different ways of approaching the faith. And, and all those differences just, just fade away. They still worship their way and they still worship their way, but they work together. And I think that's part of God's plan in this pandemic. To let all these other things fall away, I think God just wants to get us together. And so I'm praying for a movement of God's spirit as we come back. And yes, God's moves are messy. <laughs> like I said, violent wind and tongues of fire. And, and there's misunderstanding that happens and confusion. It's in our passage as well. Look here at the, at the end of the passage. Amazed and perplexed, there's confusion. They ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. I can tell you, if we make this move, if we follow God's Spirit in this, it'll be confusing to some. In fact, we'll have some who, who don't want it to happen. Some are going to resist it and say, why can't we just go back to the way we used to do things? We're going to need to be prophetic to explain, to lead people, to follow God's movement. You know, there are actually two ways that you can do church. The first way is that, that we do and we work and then we ask God to bless it. But the second way is to see what God is doing and we follow. The first way is comfortable, secure, familiar. The second way is messy, but it's exciting and it's blessed. That's where the power is. The first way can end up focusing on buildings, you know, just the way we like things, maintenance, keeping everything, you know, just so. But the second way has wonders, prophetic words, dreams, visions, and people. You know, Joel um, actually wrote of this in, in his uh, text. His prophecy speaks about this. He says, Afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people, says the Lord. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. That's exactly what we see happening. As Peter says in the sermon that comes next in the book of Acts, it's exactly what happens right here on Pentecost. And so we've looked at how this is part of God's plan from, from ages past, that what's happening right now even at Central College is a part of God's plan, I believe, this coming together, this speaking so everybody can hear in their language. But it's something that only is accomplished through the Spirit's power. And finally, when we do that, that's when God calls out and makes not just people a church, but the church, the Savior's people. When we follow the Father's plan in the Spirit's power, people, in other words, get attracted. Verse 6, it said that people heard the sound and they came together in bewilderment. People got opened up. Their ears were open to the gospel. In fact, let me read to you what happens next. And we're not going to put this up on the screen. I just want you to hear this. Uh, it's an, uh, the excerpts I'm going to take here are from uh, Peter's sermon. This comes right after the passage that we uh, read this morning. Let me read parts of it and, and hear what happens. Then Peter stood up with the eleven. He raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Men of Israel, listen to this, Peter continues. This Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. 
God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Can I get a hallelujah? Got a little worked up with that one. (laughs) Friends, this is the picture of the church that God would have us be. I listened this week to a video on our Right Now Media resource, library resource. I I hope you've tuned into that. I really do. In fact, I hope you're moving beyond that now and and you're beginning to connect with these uh, now 11 or 12 Bible studies that are being offered that you can do in your own home with other people using your computer, other Central College people. In fact, I've I've asked uh, Nate to post this video as a featured video in our church library section. Where, so if you go to Right Now Media, look over at the, the different options on the left, you'll see Central College Church. Click on that, and I want you to watch this video. But let me give you just a little piece of it. Um, Dr. Evans s- speaks about um, Olympic medalists. And he says, have you ever noticed that when that person gets the gold medal and they get up on the platform, they don't ask that person, what's your favorite song? What would you like us to play for you? Instead, They play the national anthem of that athlete. Why? Because it's not about that athlete. That athlete represents a larger kingdom. That's how it is with us. That's how it's supposed to be for you and for me in this place. It's not about Malcolm's way. It's not about your way. Whatever differences we have, let's celebrate those. But let's Let the tune be the Lord's. Dr. Evans actually says this in the video. I love this quote. If we could view our racial differences as intentional, and and I would expand that and say, if if we can view whatever differences we have in culture, you know, our different levels of wealth, our different levels of education, male, female, whatever. If we could see these differences as intentional, and then... Let's go to the next part. As a bigger part of a part of a bigger agenda, what I call the kingdom agenda. We have a vision statement at Central College. It's the kingdom of God, what? Made visible. Yeah. Part of a bigger agenda, what I call the kingdom agenda. Here's his definition. The visible demonstration of the comprehensive rule of God over every area of life. Yes. Then we can play God's song. God's song. And allow our individual uniquenesses to coalesce for the advancement of gold medals for that kingdom. You feel the wind blowing? See, our goal is not sameness. It's oneness. Oneness in purpose, not sameness in being. Do you feel the winds blowing? You can resist it. You can insist on on your own voice alone. My way or the highway. But if you do, you'll be blocking the waters and the witness of Christ. You'll be limiting the reflection of the glory of God. People get ready. The wind and the fire are coming to Central College. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in our confessions, I hope you have made us aware that we've grown too comfortable with our way and that you instead are a God who delights in diversity, that you don't want a whole church filled with Malcolms. God, help us to to be so convinced of the goodness of your message, the wonders of what you've done in Jesus Christ, that we would bend over backwards, that everyone in this church would be able to hear those wonders in their own language, that we wouldn't put yet one more barrier between anybody who's coming to the church and coming to the cross, that they'd have to learn our way of speaking or this way of singing. Instead, oh God, teach us what it means to be one in purpose, not the same in being. Father, we believe, I believe that as as you do this work 
in this place, as you're doing it right now during this pandemic, even in these times of social unrest, that you are preparing us for a larger witness, just like you were this early church, as we'll see in the weeks ahead, who once they were together, there was no stopping wherever they'd take your good word. We pray these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All praise to the Father from Jesus, his only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. As things continue, we continue to provide several ways for each of us to continue to participate in the ministries and missions of Central College Church and the kingdom work we're doing here in the community and in the wider world. The several ways include, of course, uh, giving online or texting to give. You can also mail your tithe or offering into the church address at 975 South Sunbury Road, Westerville, 43081. We continue to pray about and consider the reasons of why we give. And certainly, uh, and firstly, we give because we believe that uh, the ties that we bring before the altar of God are going to truly make a difference in this world. We're right to believe that and to expect that. But far more important as we give, we remember the one who is the reason behind every gift the one even as the Israelites discovered long ago, even as those gathered for the day of Pentecost, Pentecost experienced, that he is the one who always gives the provision. And let's look to him once more in prayer. Would you bow with us? O oh Lord God, you are the one who made the sea and the sky and, Father, the stars of night. You made the last magnificent full moon of an unforgettable springtime, Lord. Lord, we're thankful that your word teaches us that your faithfulness extends from generation to generation and beyond. And Father, that your love is for all who come before you and all especially who call upon the name of your dear son, Jesus the one you sent so long ago to love and to serve, and, Father, to sacrifice everything for us. For, Father, what we now bring is given in his name for your work, Lord, in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.
for our offering this morning. Anne is going to play a medley of two hymns with peace as the theme. And we invite you to consider the lyrics of the songs as she plays them. Let us continue our conversation with our Heavenly Father in the next few moments. Would you bow again with us in Jesus' name? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would continue to come alongside us and, Father, all those we've uplifted this week in our many prayers that we've offered, that you would show us all, Father, the face of your Son, Jesus that you'd let the shadow of his cross stretch out at length across the streets of this wounded land. Lord, that by your Spirit you would bring us blessing, but first that healing that we need, and forgiveness, and Father, new life and peace. And Lord, we pray not a temporary respite from all this trouble, but Father, a peace that is not of this world, far beyond what we can even conceive or comprehend. For Lord, we know that you call us to speak our faith in your gospel to others, but also to live it and to exercise it, to look to you too for the guidance and for the strength that we always need to share your love and your grace and always your goodwill to all people. 
Lord, we know that through the cross of your Son, we have all been set free. We pray that you would enable each of us to use our own gift of freedom in bringing that peace, in being a part of bringing that justice in our own place and time. For in you, Lord, we truly have one day something to celebrate and celebrate together. We pray these things in the matchless name, Father of your Son, even who long ago taught his disciples to pray these words, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. benediction I want to leave you with this morning comes from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church in Philippi chapter 2. Take this word of God and seal it to your own heart. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and mind. Amen.